So you can see the prototype uh, working. See how it is easy to, to change the setting to move. And then assuming that we have a journey, <laughs> see how it opens and then just closes very nicely. That's the one that's approaching. The rest of them were far below the yield, so you know, we can specifically state the, the factors of safety on this, but you know, they're easily available. But we also took into consideration um, worst case scenarios. Um, for instance, on the lift, uh, on the worst case scenario, they typically shut down the lifts like at 40 miles per hour, and in that particular scenario, we assumed it was at 50 miles an hour. So in essence, we kind of rolled in um, somewhat above and beyond factors into our calculations. Um, I think more or less it would shed as the non operates because the the type of um, construction that the string cylinder is, it, it's like a concentric cylinder within a hollow cylinder and, and the clearance is, is you know pretty small so a chance for water to really get in there and build up and be able to do some damage to restrict the travel of the locking mechanism. Um, really really isn't like a high possibility. But if there is, yeah, I mean the, the force that you can generate and and, and length of time, of course, it takes for you to generate that force would probably break up a little bit of buildup and would shed those deposits of ice if that was an issue. Like, well, <laughs> yeah, there is a, as the Jason said before, that we really consider a very serious worst case scenario. I think that a, if a person jumps from five meters high and lands on a hard surface, the least of these guys on is going to be so the bike. <laughs> uh, I mean, it depends. I mean, there's a huge array. I mean, bindings can cost up to $500. It just really depends on how serious you want to get into it. You can get into the sport for you know, $250, something like that. But I mean, you know, you can get uh, really fast things. It may be a hindrance to maybe a beginner who's never experienced this, you know, doesn't know if he's going to like it or not, doesn't want to spend five, six hundred dollars on it. But to someone who does it all the time, who knows what it feels like to have your board torque in your knee and ankle all day long, I don't think it's going to be that, that big of a hindrance. I think a lot of the material selection um, ideas that we had going into it was, of course, um, you know, lightweightness, strength, and something that um, did have a reasonable um, coefficient um, of expansion um, in extreme conditions, like what you stated, delta T of 100, like that's. Pretty extreme, you know. I mean, if you get that kind of temperature swing, I don't know, you may not, you might not be in, in a skiing environment, or you have it up in a hot attic, or something like that. But um, we, that that wasn't the driving factor as to selecting our material, but we did take it into consideration. But um, just the density of the material obviously affects the overall weight, so that's what we're really looking towards. And something obviously corrosion resistant too. Um, not everyone's going to take their board off, you know, dry it up, and all that, and make sure there's no water anywhere that can cause. Um, the things that this spider graph is comparing the uh, three, um, the theoretical design, our actual design, and uh, an improved design. And they, they, the three uh, work, they have the same mechanism, <coughs> the moments, and they treat them in the same way. We've actually had additional um, ambitions even after this project here to possibly pursue um, pitching this, um, obviously with a, a, a more robust redesign um, according to different uh, manufacturing methods, um, namely the pixel molding that we have 
mentioned, but uh, currently we have not gotten into a whole patenting process or anything like that, but we are definitely interested, definitely interested. We're actually lucky enough to have two of our teammates who are presenting right now. They uh, pitched this idea in their entrepreneurial engineering class to investors, and uh, they mentioned that they were interested in you have venture capital funding already? <laughs> you bet. It's in the works. We uh, chose to not look at corrosion in particular because um, that one was really hard to quantify to find the properties of that. And we were saying that that would be a gross approximation. Um, you know, just the, even the difference of water that they use when they make the snow in, in certain regions, you know, the acidity, that kind of stuff. I mean, we would just be assuming so many things in that. We chose not to look at that at the fatigue life. We, we looked at that as a play um, and that was the one that we focused on. Well, for scenario one, what we did is uh, took this person on the snowboard with this mass and dropped it from five meters high. And uh, we, to, to account for the forces, the, the impact forces, we modeled the uh, snowboarders legs as the spring and using the conservation of energy we were able to find the spring constant and the spring force. So the spring constant was 76,455.6 meters and the, the spring force was over 24,000 newtons which translate to 5,500 pounds. That we have to consider the mass of the uh, person, the mass of the small water quality, the volume of the five meter. And that's why uh, we say this is a very extreme uh, case, uh, worst case. Uh, for the uh, third the case, carbon. the carbon, what we did is, uh, for simplicity, we uh, simulated that the person is a snowboard on a flat surface. He's going at 10 meters per second, and he is turning very fast. At the instant that he is turning, he needs to feel his or her body to, uh, to, to transfer some of that centrifugal force onto the ground via the snow. So we, uh, we found, a, we got the instance when, when the person is tilted at a certain degree, and then we did the balance of forces on that moment. The, one we, uh, the scenario we ran uh, was showing 75 kilograms, so 165 pounds. Um, we were still well below the yield on that, so I'm assuming we could go. I guess I couldn't use that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, well, let's thank this team.